So, um, yeah. just want to kind of open up the dialogue. Oh, a little I, know, bit about I, know, I know it's not going to list of questions. Really <coughs> the questions. The research that our counties have done today, earlier today, they really need to we met with our genetic legislative delegation, yeah. Senator Bill Mockford, uh, Representative Chuck Brandon, and, and uh, Representative Jesse Schoen our district for our state legislature in, in Madison at 1 o'clock today, along with EPA representatives from EPA, representatives from Florida Department of uh, Environmental Protection, Swan River Water Management District, Department of Health, Florida Department of Health. Um, unfortunately, Georgia EPD uh, decided not to attend. For whatever reason, we don't know. We're a little bit disturbed about that. But um, for those present here, we, we've been working closely with the city of Austin for the last year in our river task force. And we've had, I feel, significant cooperation between us as far as being now being informed in a timely manner and some things. And I know y'all have done a lot of effort, we've done a lot of work in the infrastructure mainly geared towards these hydro events and we get where the, the, the plant overflows from stormwater infiltration and so forth. Um, it's unfortunate that we're here tonight to talk about, and, and just from our standpoint, um, I'll be frank, oversight, a lack of oversight and um, quality control on the city of Austin's part when it comes to your contractors that are out there doing your work. And I know you rely on them to do the work, but there has to be some form of oversight on was the work done properly, was it done adequately, was it done right, and is your system operating and functioning afterwards the way it should be. And just to give you an idea, we done a little bit of my colleague here, Commissioner Adams, just briefly today made a mention in our meeting. 7.5 million gallons over a four or five day event equates to 40 to 50,000 gallons an hour that, that your plant missed, you know? And I've been told that it was three or four days after this work was done that your employees said, hey, we're missing a million, two gallons a day you do the math, calculation at the you know, estimates uh, at our plant. You know, and then you say, okay, then you go back and try to find out where this is happening. And, and I'll just be honest with you and just forgive me. For, it, I don't think that's good business. You got, and just to be blunt about it. Um, we have issued in Madison County and uh, Hamilton County since December 9th, two local states of emergency that we, we've issued those local states of emergency for our citizens. And we're providing water samples for our citizens. We've had uh, 183 test wells tested in Madison County with 38 that's come back positive for coliform and a couple of them have heat cut up in tow line. Those are things that we're, we're trying to raise, uh, you know, raise awareness that it's important to have your wells tested regardless of where you live and, and to make sure your water quality is, is accurate and good. Um, and I understand the permit's been issued. That's great for the basin. There's a lot of that. And I, I'm glad that that's finally been accomplished. And I'm hoping that in the future any major rain events where there's a stormwater infiltration that, that does occur, that that will be enough to keep the, your, your sewage out of the rivers, okay? So, but that, that, that still goes back to the human factor and the quality of the work <coughs> that's being done, your oversight of the work that's being done, and basically, I mean, you're permitted by Georgia's EDP. It's your system. <coughs> and at the end of the day, regardless of who does the work, it comes back to the city of Valdosta, it's your responsibility to make
measure your system operating accurately, and it operating the way it should be. And I know there's a lot of people here that are very frustrated about that. And I guess part of the conversation I'd like to have tonight is what is the city of Valdosta doing from this point forward to make to have oversight of your system and oversight of your employees, oversight of who is doing the work for you. So with that. I'll address the quality control issue. Uh, here's what happened. Uh, it was a minor adjustment to this little station. It was not a huge project, but we needed a construction manager out there watching. Uh, secondly, what happened was we did not realize they were making that adjustment. We did not know they were out there. How we found out they were about that is when we looked back in the logs from the company and they showed this going out. So at that point in time, we didn't know they were making that adjustment to after all of this happened. So there was no way we could go out there and check something they did because they made an adjustment on their own based on them in, you know, continuing to implement the state system. So that's with that. Uh, we have SOPs um, that they that we follow as well. Uh, but like I said, we were not aware that this gentleman, this third party contractor, was making that adjustment. Day one, we have said, we hide behind that contract. It's our responsibility. We take it 100% and we don't take it lightly whatsoever. So, uh, anybody that thinks other than that, uh, it is absolutely not true. It's a little frustration. We're equally as frustrated with it. As I said, zero tolerance for school. Do we keep having them? Absolutely. Regardless of the county right now, so, but to address that, why that didn't happen, I'll go ahead and tell you as well. We have to, we did clean up as Gerald said, we got our numbers, we followed our protocol with EPD, we began an internal investigation. Now, all employees and all the rest of the to see what happened. That's, we couldn't have prevented it, but we could have found it sooner. I'll tell everybody in this room that We had two employees that did not follow specifically what they should have done. And that's why it lasted as long as it did. Because the boys are no longer with us. That's all I, that's the best I can do to tell you that. It was a, system, a series of some errors from the contractor and our boys, but we don't have to hunt them. It's our responsibility we're going to take care of. And I think we demonstrated that in the past. Yes, I know we can have them, but if you've been to these quarterly meetings, you know everything that we put into the system to make this not happen. Again, we, we, we don't want it to happen much as you guys don't want to have it. Oh, yes, ma'am. So, I deal with standard operating procedures and work instructions all day long with the Department of State, Department of Commerce, Department of Homeland Security, and Department of Treasury. So, you have a written report, post event report, you have a corrective action report. I'd like to know what the corrective action report says rather. As, as opposed, opposed to dismissing two employees, have you updated the SOP and the work instruction? And where is the corrective action report? We'd like to see the changes between the SOP and the work instruction from then and now. The, the SOPs, like I said, they work. My employee, we had two employees that we did not do 100% of the SOP. So we haven't actually changed the SOP yet because we're still looking at those things. But again, the, we have those two employees that did not follow the prescription. Exactly. If I went and made an error in the U.S. Department of State, and I turned in a report or a letter that said, this violation of the okay, case was due to human error, they come down on me so hard because we cannot ever say that there was a human error. There is a policy error, there's a process error, there is a training error, but it is not a human error. Somebody didn't have the right checklist or didn't have something That's not what I said. Place. That the proper protocol was in place. We had two employees that did not follow it specifically as they should have. Had they had, like I said, they wouldn't have prevented it by any means, but they could have found it on Wednesday morning or about this morning if they had done what they were supposed to do. So we're talking about prevention. We're not talking about 
something the day after it happened. Okay, we were talking about what can we, what piece of paper needs to change so this is prevented in the future, so that we're not at the point where we're getting rid of people. Yeah, you know, as far as prevention, you know, that goes back to the mechanics and and the technical end of it, and I, you know, and. Uh, and ironically, that's what was being installed at the site was the supervisory control and data acquisition, which is that <clears throat> very process that you're talking about that would give you advance notice of any of any event at the at the lift station. So, uh, yeah, what's being put in place? An advanced data system is being put in place at that station and at the, every other lift station. In the city, in fact, in fact, you know, uh, part of that system is already up and running, and we have calls coming in now. So, in the event that something similar to that happens again, we will get <coughs> advanced information that there is a failure at that particular station or any station that's in the city of Augusta. So, what that does, so. First of all, site entry. When that person opened the gate to go into that site, it would have called us and said, someone's at your site, you need to take a look. That would have been thing one. Thing two, when they disconnected the cable and it went into a non-communication of the wet well condition, that would have been alarm number two. I don't know how much water's in the wet well. You need to, you need to, uh, need to get somebody out here. Third backup, it would went into backup mode, saying I can't control, uh, I can't control this station as I normally do. I'm going into default mode, which is just to run the pumps off of the ball flow system until someone tells me to do something differently. So those three things would have been given. Those three <coughs> notifications would have come out to our technical folks to get them on the way to the site immediately. The, the moment that guy opened the door. We would have gotten an alarm, and we would have started getting that direction. I have a question. I got, I got a question. Well, you go first. <laughs> uh, does your standard operating procedure require visual inspection of manholes in this station daily, uh, especially ones in remote areas, or that uh, if they overflow, go into a creek or a river? No. And, and if not, why? Well. Manholes, we have 5,000 plus manholes, 4,000, 4 to 5,000 plus manholes, so we can't, we can't, uh, we can't inspect them all. Well, now, yeah, I, think I, would, I think he needs a list station. I, I mean, I mean anything that could only flow into a creek or a river, especially a remote one. Obviously, this one was because nobody saw a flashing light. Yeah. Uh, so, well, uh, I know there's guys riding around this city in white trucks all day long. Yeah. And it doesn't take long to go down the street and say, okay, everything, uh, no overflows here. Yeah, yeah, as far as manholes, you know, we have several thousand, I don't want to say five, we have several thousand manholes, so it's unlikely that we're going to have someone in at all those locations in the course of a day or a week. However, Maybe you however, should. <laughs> well, however, what we have deployed are uh, some manhole monitoring sensors that are being, I think we have a few of them in places. This, this week or last week they were installed at some of our critical locations where we know that there's a potential for an overflow. You know, we've had one there before. So we've started to put equipment in those manholes that does notify us when it starts to see the level in the manhole level. So we are getting there, we're not there yet. But as far as lift stations, our SOPs do include visual inspection, which is what the gentleman <coughs> that Wednesday morning should have done, and we would have caught it much sooner. Da daily inspection? Not daily. Mm -hmm. the, the, the maybe every well, other day. Well, daily. Depends on the, it depends on, because they work in shifts, so it's well, mostly well, by shift. Maybe you should update it daily. Well, well, it's by shift, so that would be twice a day. Somebody looking at it, when they would change switch shifts. So you're saying it's twice a day that the SOP yeah. requires it? And so how did it get and by all four just say this on clear. It's not all of our lift stations. It's the larger ones like Reamer and the Gorto Road. We, those are the ones that are the largest yeah. ones. So you're so saying it went eight shifts without anybody so noticing it? Went that it? next morning. It went 
that next morning. Four days. We're still talking after the Lord is here. In the very beginning of your presentation, you made a comment about the two types of events. This kind of event, and then there's this kind of event. And because there was, I can't remember the words you used, I'm old, so I can go around and say recall, and, and, and perfect recall. But it, because it was this kind of event, it didn't require some kind of human uh, double check or whatever it was. So I'd like you to repeat that again, I missed that part. Yeah. What was the word you used? Higher, lower. Are you talking about the charts, man? The two types of events you said were two types of events. I don't recall that. I know I was talking about two different levels. Yeah. That there is a level that we normally get at the treatment plant and what we actually receive. And the difference between those two levels is what we report to people. Yeah. Were you talking about? routine maintenance on the thing that the company just initiated without telling us Yeah, yeah. and he had a name for that versus uh, this kind of thing. Do they have a report that they were going to the maintenance when we talk about part? Okay. Yeah. I still have a question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, typically when they were allowed to do some maintenance on our site, they were required to inform some of our technicians, our supervisors, that they had a technician going out to the site, <coughs> and we would get someone to the site, and we would inspect the work and make sure that everything was, was going correctly. It was the end of the day, and the gentleman wanted to make another adjustment. He knew it was going to take five minutes, so he said, okay, I'm just going to run in here real quick and do this. And he did not notify the city that he was going into the site. He went into the site, made the adjustment, and left. Okay. But I think what, what I thought you had said was because it was this type of uh, action that they were performing, that they didn't have to. And, and maybe I misheard. Yeah, it's, well, it was a minor. It was a minor. Right. It was That's a minor. Right. I think that had to do with having an inspector on site. No, we would have had 